Hi guys, Blake and Matt for Always the Code UK and this is a video on the top 10 boots released in the 2015-16 season. So this is all the boots released from pretty much the start of the 2015-16 season, so it started for August 2015 to the end of May 2016. So the first boot we'll use in our top 10 is the Puma Everpower 1.3. Nice. Nice. Yep, so obviously this is a Evo Power 1.3 boot. This is the camouflage colorway, so the colorway that was actually teased before they came out. It's a boot worn by some goalkeepers. Boo Fawn wore this in the Euro. He wore the Trix pack. However, he had his own version of the Trix. So the Trix was a yellow with a pink. However, he had two yellow pairs, so he obviously didn't fancy the pink. Um, it was quite interesting actually watching Boo Fawn play. He didn't even kick the ball that you'd expect in the Evo Power. He wouldn't do those long distance passes. He was actually playing out from the back quite a lot, so that was very interesting. And overall, it's a pretty good boot. Play, what do you think? Yeah, so the Evo One for Three was launched at the start of 2016 in that really nice yellow and blue launch design. Big fan of that. You've also seen a black blue design. And on top of that, we saw the celebration pack, which was a sort of tricks pack. Sort of grey on the front and pink and yellow on the back. A nice little design there. And this was also won by Olivia Giroud. Did score three goals at the Euros. So this comes in at number 10. Number 9 sees the Tempo Legend 6 showcase at number 9. And yeah, this is the fake pair. If you haven't seen the fake video of the Timber Legend 6, click on that video now. And yeah, this is the launch design, launched back in, what was it, November last year. Yeah. This is the liquid chrome edition, really nice white, black, and a bit of crimson on the back there. What do you think, Matt? Yeah, it's a nice boot. Um, obviously, it's a very popular boot out there. There's a lot of center halves who wear it. And also, didn't Jack Wilshere go from his, what, did he wear an Opus? He wore, he wore the Opus, then he switched to Yeah, so he, so he was an Opus wearer, and obviously then the Tempo Legend 6 came out, and he opted to go for the Legend 6, so obviously he fancied this boot a lot more than the Opus. It does have that really nice K leather upper, so overall, it's a really sweet boot. Overall, the Tempo Legend 6 is a solid leather boot, very comfortable, and probably the most comfortable boot on this list. Number 8 is the... Magista Opus, so not the Obra, the Magista Opus. We're going with the low cut version of the Opus because we think that's really more of a what people want in a football boot. The collar is not really liked by everyone. Yeah, so mm -hmm. the Obra, I mean, it's both good boots, the Obra and the Opus. What do you think, Matt? Well, I mean, obviously the Opus is worn by Barcelona's midfield trio. You've got Busquets, Iniesta, and is it Arda Turan? Arda Turan, yeah. All, all wear the Opus. Um, something that we saw early, actually, was either Benega. He's just signed for... Uh, into Milan, yeah. Into Milan, um, Milan. And so he's actually opted for the Obra, so the flying it version. However, he's had his very professionally cut and then stitched back up to make it look like an Opus, so it has that low cut. However, it does have that flying it Obra kind of design, so that's very interesting. So at number seven is. The Mercurial Superfly 5, obviously a massive release towards the end of the 2015-16 season. It's really had a massive modification and update from that Superfly 4. Biggest change is maybe the sole plate. Yeah, definitely the sole plate, yeah. The Superfly was renowned for its carbon fiber sole plate, but the Superfly 5 actually opts for a nylon layered chassis, which is very, very thin and it's layered, so it makes it incredibly light. One of the lightest Superflies ever. Is it the lightest Superfly of all time? It is the lightest Superfly of all time. Well, it's the lightest Superfly with a collar, because this the Superfly 4 was a very, very good boot, so it was sort of hard to, how can you, how can you actually evolve the Superfly 4 into the Superfly 5? They've done that with the contoured sole plate, it's much more responsive. So yeah, who wears the Superfly 5? So obviously the headline wearer is Cristiano Ronaldo. He's obviously recently just won the Euro with Portugal. So massive well done to Ronaldo. Obviously he had that upset in time against Greece in 2004. Yep, I think right. it was, they lost in the final, you saw the tears. And obviously he was crying again in this year's final. He went off injured, which was a massive shock and surprise because it's a player that never really does get injured. No, I mean, no, no. He's, he's, he career. always stays fit, doesn't he? Like, exactly right. So it was a bit of a shame see, like, seeing him go off because um, obviously he's a, he's a massive player. Um, but he did really well without him saying that. Um, maybe talk, talk about the Superfly 5. Maybe one thing that I'm not a fan of, I'm not sure about Blake, is that colourway. You know, oh, the I launch colourway. Yeah. Launch colourway. You've got the recent release pitch dark pack. Much which nicer. Black and a bit of pink. It's a really, really nice design. This design is really, really modern. I can see how people can like it, and I certainly can see how people can hate it. And yeah, so who is, who's actually going to wear this boot? De Bruyne, headline mm -hmm. Superfly 4 is. I'm going to switch to the Superfly 5. And yeah, so De Bruyne, Martial, heaps of sort of strikers, wingers are going to headline the Superfly 5. Of course, we've only seen two colorways for the Superfly 5, Spark Brilliance and the Pitch Dark. So what do we see at number six? Number six is the Ace 15 Plus Primer, which we don't have here today. 
the Ace 50 Plus Prime that was about pretty much released in 2015. We saw two colorways. We saw that really nice solar red and black design and that black and white design. Yeah, sharp. We did actually test it, Matt. How do you feel that went? Yeah, obviously, so it was one of the first boots I actually tested when I came here, footballboots.co.uk. Um, and one of the most noticeable features of it was how comfortable it was, that primary upper. Um, one thing about it was quite wide fitting, but I did really enjoy the Prime upper itself. So what I did was I went for the slightly narrow fitting X15 Plus Prime but it was actually a really nice boot. It had that total control sole plate with lots and lots of studs, which we both weren't such a fan of. It, no, it, it was quite control, slippy. No. Yeah. Too many conical studs. You know, I, I wore the Ace 15.1, that solar red edition. I've got really, really wide feet. It was, was really good for my wide feet, but they were just, the, the total control um, sole plate was really stiff, like the conical studs. Mm -hmm. There's too many studs on there, and in that, in that matter, really stiff. Who can you remember wore the Ace 15s? Xavi Alonso. Yep, your favorite player. I do like Xavi Alonso, yeah, he's got Spain. Don't have Alonso on the back, maybe I should. I'm, I'm a player that likes to play a bit like him, playing those log diagonal passes, so I can relate to him a little bit. Um, who else, Javi Martinez? Javi Martinez, a lot of German Bayern Munich players. Um, Max Philip Hummels. Mann, he may even worn the leather version. He wore the leather version, Hummels, yeah. Hummels, um, Neuer, I think Neuer wore the, the 15s a lot. And in terms of the Premier League players, who can we think? Daily Blind, Manchester United, I'm a Manchester yeah. United fan. Um, a lot of um, defenders and a lot of goalkeepers, a lot of central midfielders wore the ace for a long time. Very then the time. ace 16 plus and ace 16 range came out and they all sort of switched to that. Now on to number five on our list, this is the X15 Plus Prime Knit. Now this is another boot you've worn heavily. Yep. Obviously it was a boot that I actually got myself to play for my own football, and it lasted me a very long time. It was actually my match boot for pretty much the whole season of 2015-16. My favourite thing about it was that internal compression wrap inside. I, I like to feel very like snug and responsive, a bit like the Superfly offers, because it has those speed ribs across and inside the boot. It did have that compression wrap. It was a very nice boot, and as I said, that primer upper was top level. We've got the 15.1 there, don't yeah, so we? Yeah. This was the launch design of the 15.1s, solar yellow and black, really sort of elegant modern design for the X15.1s. So this was the first X range we saw for the 2015-16 season, headlined by a lot of sort of speed players, the likes of Gareth Bale. He actually still wears the X15.1, his sort yeah. of custom version, he's got an Ada Zero Soul. Black white colourway? Yeah, black white colourway yeah. at the Euros, we scored three goals, a couple of really nice free kicks Ciao with hard. those X15.1s. And yeah, other players that wore it was Suarez, Benzema, a lot of sort of strikers wore the X15 range as well as the X15 Plus Prime Knit. We did see three colourways for the X15 mm. Plus Prime Knit, not this one, it was the solar red one, the one you liked. Yep. Yeah. The black, black one. Oh and my god, Tootie Fruity. Horrendous Tootie Fruity design. It was a kind of solely yellow, pink, black. Black. And outrageous. It's a really, outrageous. really bad colorway. No wonder why they, they killed it off with three boots. But good decision. it was a good boot, a really sort of snug, tight yep. fitting boot, tech fit wrap. It was a I don't, yeah, it's a shame to see that the X Core Studs sole plate has gone. Yep. Now on to number four, the Mercurial Vapor 10. Not the 11, the Vapor 10. So the Vapor 11 was just released by Nike Football along with the Superfly 5. We've only seen two colorways for the Vapor 11, Spark Brilliance and Pitch Dark. But for the 2015-16 season, we saw the Vapor 10 take place. And who wore it? Eden Hazard, again, like the same old Mercurial Vapor players. Exactly. It's Latin Ibrahimovic, who's just signed for Manchester United. He actually wore the Vapor 10s at the Euros, didn't score any goals with them. He wore them Radiant Reveal Editions. A lot of colorways for that. Mm -hmm. How do you feel they went in the 2015-16 season? Well, I think they were actually a really good boot, um, especially comparing them to the new Vapor 11. Um, we did a comparison video on the 10 versus 11s. So if you want to check that out, you can click on the card now too. Um, both in hand, the Vapor 10 had a much softer feel to it, so it's going to offer a bit more of a second skin, barefoot touch and feel when touching and striking the ball. I mean, it, it was a huge boot in, in, in that season. There were some players like Luka Modric is another one of my favourite players. He wore the Vapor 10. He still does. I yep. think. I don't think he he's actually, even has, moved. He actually wore them in the Euros as well. Another he wore them in the Euros. Euros. Shame that Croatia didn't go as far as maybe they could have done because I thought they were a really good underdog team with some really nice players in there, especially their midfielder Rakitic, Modric. Kovacic was in there as well. Kovacic, um, Perisic. Perisic, yeah, um, some really nice players in there, all in Zic. And on to our third boot on the list is the Nike Hypervenom Phantom 2. Now this is a fake pair, the Lightning Storm fake pair, that's pretty much headlined by Neymar for the start of the season. And yeah, 
Along with this, we saw, what was the other Lightning Storm one? Like a bright orange edition. Yeah, very bright orange. So yeah, we've seen a lot of colorways for the Hyperion Phantom 2. And of course, the standout feature to the new Hyperion 2, the version 2, is this new Nike skin upper we saw on the Hyperion Phantom 1 first generation. Matt, you have actually tested that as well. How do you think they went? I mean, this boot, especially compared to the actual launch Phantom, to, I mean, that up was quite stiff, that Nike skin, it did have the honeycomb texture and it wasn't grippy. This is obviously a huge improvement in my opinion, also Blake kind of feels the same as well, that Nike obviously opted to modify that up to make it more like the Phantom 1. I've actually just gone and purchased myself the Finish 2, so this colorway actually, um, obviously that Finish, that low cut in this bulk colorway, very nice boot, great upper, and it's a boot that I'm a big fan of. There's been a lot of colorways for the High okay. Venom. Yeah. And on to number two, this is probably my favorite boot on the list, along with the High Venom range, is the Asus Scene Plus Pure Control. Lovely boot. It's a top level boot. We've obviously just um, tested this one um, in a Speed of Light kind of pack review. And I mean, it's just a lovely boot to wear. It's a lovely looking boot. It feels great on feet. It's got the compression wrap inside. Lovely solar yellow colorway here. You've got the blue one. Shot blue, and we also see the launch shot green. Your shot green, solar so green. green. So this is it here. Yeah, this is the launch edition. This but one's we actually blacked it out. It's not the best blackout job we've done, as you can see. I'll just bring it closer. As, as you can see, that laces area doesn't look that great. It just means it's quite patchy. The upper itself looks very, very sharp, and the green on the bottom looks quite nice with the upper, but overall, it was a pretty bad boot to black out. It wasn't really that well. Well, the upper took well to it. Yeah, I mean, look, it's, a, it's really nice here, but you know, the, I think you should probably leave the laces region if you were to black out this That's boot. what we learned. Yeah. But back onto it, the Pure Control is a really decent boot for everyone. I'm someone with really, really wide feet, and it fits my feet perfectly. Yeah, so I'm in love with the Pure Control. But this by far is my favorite colorway. On to number one. You probably have guessed it, the Mercurial Superfly 4. Huge. Not the 5, the 4. So the 4 was a heavily worn boot in the 2015-16 season. And today we have fake pairs of the well, Quinientos and the 324K Gold CR7 editions. We've done a fake video on these two boots. Click on the video now if you want to see that. But the Superfly 4 was the headline boot by Nike for the 2015-16 season. Headlined by a lot of players. Of course, Ronaldo was a headline wearer of the Superfly 4. He recently switched to the Superfly 5 for the Euros. But yeah, a lot of what was the colorways that we saw for the Superfly 4? Oh, there were so many. I mean, obviously, we had the CR7 natural diamond one. Was that was the Savage Beauty Blue, one. Savage Beauty, obviously we blacked that one out as well, which and looked really nice, all black with a little bit of orange coming through. We also cut the collar off that boot too. We pretty much destroyed, yeah, that, destroyed that boot now. Blake's wearing, wearing it now. It, and I'm loving it. Scoring like, goals. Well, I mean, I think my favorite feature of the Superfly 4 was that carbon fiber sole plate, something that I'm a really big fan of. It have been for a number of years because it has been around for such a long time. So knowing that or hearing that the Superfly 5 wasn't gonna have it, it was gonna have that nylon, I was a little bit, Skeptical about it, but it actually turned out to be a really good job from the Superfly 5. But I mean, overall, the Superfly 4 was a massive boot in the season just gone. It's, it, it looks lovely, it feels lovely when you're playing. It's obviously very expensive. If you do have the money, then it's a great boot to go for. However, it is a very premium boot with that premium price. And Dimitri Payet, now he was an interesting one at the Euros. He wore a Radiant Reveal Superfly 4 at the Euros. He didn't switch to the Superfly 5s. Of course, he's got three goals wearing the Superfly 4 Radiant Reveal Edition. So yeah, that pretty much wraps up our top 10. Of course, there are some boots which didn't make it, like the recent release Pure Chaos and Pure Agility. Obviously, yeah. they weren't worn in the 2015-16 season. So yeah, that wraps up the list. Any boots you think should have made the list, please put them in the comment section below. Any questions as well, comment section below. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching. As always, we'll see you next time.